Hello there, friends. I'm the Dungeon Coach, creator of DC20, and I'm here to blow your minds with the Scion class. I'm doing the same thing we're doing for all classes and starting off with a big overview breakdown of what the class fantasy of a Scion is. What does it feel like to play them in general? And then we're going to dial it in one notch and talk about the level one and two class features, because that's when the really the class comes online before you start getting subclasses and branching out opportunities. Then we're going to go one step farther and talk about what kind of characters you could make if you started off as a different class and used your multi-class talent on a Scion and started to pick from there and what could you make? Hey, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about and you've been living under a rock, DC20 is a new tabletop roleplay game that just launched the Alpha and the Scion is a brand new class that is not in any of its counterparts. It's not in D&D or Pathfinder or anything like that and the Scion truly does stand alone as a class and I've always thought it should. And that leads me right on into this big overview of what is a Scion's class fantasy. Scions are masters of telepathy, which is the mind and messing with the minds of others, using your mind to speak telepathically and telekinetic. So you can reach out into the world mentally to mess with other people's minds, and you can reach out into the world physically by lifting and moving things around with your mind. Your mind has ascended to be able to reach out into the world in those ways and affect it. And I like to talk about this with all classes too, is like their source of power. Where does it come from? Scions are really interesting in that way, is where you get your mental powers can come from a lot of different places. Maybe it's similar to how a sorcerer would work, and it comes from your bloodline as some sort of creature that has mental telepathic powers. Or maybe you were exposed to something and it targeted your mind, or some creature altered and affected your mind, and and now it's opened it up in this way. Or maybe more so like a wizard you really studied, you studied hard and you learned about the mind and what's possible and these different connections you can make and you've unlocked your own mind. Or going back to that creature affecting your mind, maybe you asked for it to happen. It's more so like a warlock type situation. You can explain your mental magics in whatever ways you want and be more so like Professor Xavier from the X-Men or be more like a Jedi from Star Wars. And depending on how you build out your character, which we'll get to at the end of the video, you could make, you could make both of those characters. Time out, it's October. And what holidays in October? that we love to make one shots around and do some creepy spooky stuff with Halloween. And there's a Kickstarter that just launched called Libris Nocturnum, which translates to Book of Night. It is a 5e horror anthology of 13 different adventures, 13 different towns and settlements you can explore around, and over 30 monsters. This is brought to you by none other than Steve from Lunch Break Heroes. And if you don't know who Steve from Lunch Break Heroes is, this guy was meant for this horror stuff because he is the king of Curse of Strahd. He has countless videos on his YouTube channel breaking down Curse of Strahd, taking it to new levels. He's helped my Curse of Strahd campaign that I'm in the middle of running right now. He knows how to run horror, and these 13 adventures really show it because you can use them in three different ways I really love. One, run them as a one-shot around Halloween. You pick this up, run it for Halloween. You got yourself a spooky little one-shot. Two is you can take these and plug them into an adventure that's a little bit horror. Or maybe, you're, maybe your homebrew campaign doesn't have a lot of horror to it, but you want to have the side quest where they do. Or option three is you can plug them all together and run them as one big adventure with a you chain all 13 of these horror adventures together and have a big horror campaign. Along with a ton of other resources like those towns and monsters and full maps, beautifully drawn maps integrated into virtual tabletops. Lunch Break Heroes is a friend of this channel and you can check out the link to their Kickstarter down in the description. If you dare. <laughs> All right, now let's get into the class features. We're going to be a little bit more specific now on levels one and two. Obviously, this class expands and goes even further beyond that, especially based on how you customize it, what subclass you pick. We're staying super basic right now, focus on levels one and two, and we're going right to the master document. First class feature you get is your Scion spell casting feature, which just functionally allows you to cast spells. Nothing fancy here. This is just a little starter kit to help get the Scion up and moving. Simple combat masteries, light weapons, light armor, spell casting, simple. Spell list. This is very unique unique for the Scion, and a, the Scion in general also is a class that's not a heavy spell caster. Yes, they can cast spells. It's very limited and restricted, but they have usually class features that let them be able to spend their mana. You'll see what I'm talking about. So the spell list is you can choose from any spell list at all, any spell list in the game, but it has to be spells with a psychic or gravity tag or from the following schools of magic, abjuration, divination, enchantment, or illusion. Now again, disclaimer, I am going over the alpha of this right now, the alpha 0.4 just released, and I'm sure there's gonna be some more updates to this, but this is the concept of the Scion of whatever it says currently right now. The Scion is, has access to all spells, but specifically only the ones that make sense for the Scion. Psychic involved ones, gravity means like them moving around telekinesis and altering the creed. It's not necessarily them altering gravity, although you could totally explain it in that way if you wanted to. It's telekinesis, moving stuff around. And limiting the schools of magic makes sense to be able to limit what the what their mind powers are able to do. Then, of course, you have your cantrips known, spells known. That's all taken care of in your little table right here. You know, one cantrip at the start and only two spells. Again, very, very limited. The amount of mana points they get is normal. Everything else is normal, but they have less than usual cantrips and less than usual spells because... 
of their Mind Blast and Telekinetic Shove features. This is what I'm talking about, the defining characteristics of the Scion. You have the two pillar cornerstones of the Scion is mentally assaulting another creature's mind, that's Mind Blast, or physically moving a creature's body around through space with telekinesis. Simply put, getting in someone else's mind or moving their body around with your own mind. So the first real feature here is Mind Blast, and this is very unique than what would be like a cantrip of a mental type of psychic cantrip. This is very, very fleshed out as far as what it's able to do, and it's very uh, flexible in what it's able to do. So you can spend one action point to assault a creature's mind within five spaces. Again, it's a limited range. That's not very much range. You make a spell check against the target's mental defense, and then you can deal one psychic damage. And that, at its base level, if you just want to attack and assault someone's mind, you can. One action point, super simple, right? Now, action point enhancements. This is where this thing really gets crazy, is you can spend one additional action point to deal another psychic damage. You can spend another action point to increase the range by five. So if you really want to hit somebody really far away, you could spend two action points and make it 10 spaces. And now it's a 15 space range. You're pretty far away at reaching out into someone's mind, but it takes a lot of focus and effort and time spent in action points, right? In DC 20, you have four action points. And this is kind of another reason why I like having this flexible fluid system is you can do cool stuff like this and customize your own mind blast of how you're messing with someone's mind, right? Or you can choose to add any of the AP enhancements down here, also all one action point, and force the creature along with your spell your spell check that you make to assault the damage against it. Um, you can make them have a mental save that they make at the same time, right? This is how dynamic attack saves work in DC 20. If you spend ac action points on multiple effects, it all has one save as you you mix and match this, this little buffet of mind messery all into one little package deal. Uh, you can add one action point now again, you do have to cape, spend one action point to cast Mind Blast. It, that, so of your four action points, you have to spend one, and that is now you are casting Mind Blast, but you can enhance it with more. You could spend all four action points on one big beefy Mind Blast, right? Uh, you can spend an action point to add the Daze Condition, which gives disadvantage on mental checks and spell checks if you're having an opposing spellcaster, right? Uh, break Focus, you can break the enemy's concentration. That's crazy, and especially if you know it's concentrating on something. Rend Mind, you can reduce the target's mental defense by two and just make the mental mentally weaker to further future assaults on their mind. Uh, you can give the target disadvantage on the, the, the mental save against this feature. What forceful is, is you would never do uh, mind blast and forceful. What? What this does is this spins an action point to give them disadvantage on the mental save you're having them do. So just a little pro tip here to make sure that, that how the strategy of that would work is if you wanted to spend an action point to cast Mind Blast and you really wanted to break the target's concentration, like everything in your being you needed to break this enemy's concentration, you would do Mind Blast, spending an action point. You'd spend one action point right here on Break Focus, right? And then you would spend Forceful and Forceful. You see what I'm saying? You could do all of that in once. So it would be Mind Blast, Break Focus. Now they have to make a save. At this point, they have to make a save, a, a mental save to be able to maintain concentration. If you spent an action point here on Forceful, they now have disadvantage on that check. If you spend another action point on Forceful, they have double disadvantage. They're rolling three D20s and taking the lowest. Oof, that's rough, right? That's the whole point of what Forceful does, is it really allows you to pour your action points in this to something you really, really want to do, which is also in the spirit of DC20. You could also mix and match these effects around and be like, okay, I want to do a Mind Blast, uh, and I'm going to add some range to it to be able to daze and rend the mind of the target I'm assaulting. Here we go. So you would make your, your check at a further range, your spell check against their mental defense, and you make your spell check for the damage. They make their mental save for the effects, and that is also the beautiful split in DC 20 of how that works. So they would make one mental save against the daze and the rend mind effects, and if they failed, they would suffer both of those. They would be dazed and their mental defense would be reduced by two. There you go. So that's how, uh, and you also have uh, mana point enhancements, which is very rare for a spell to have both of these. You can spend one or more mana up to your combat mastery, as usual. Uh, your spend limit on all spells and mana type of things is equal to your combat mastery, which is half your level. Um, um, before you make a spell check to choose an additional two AP enhancements. So all that cool stuff I said that you can do and you can really customize what you can do with 
Mind Blast, you can spend mana and every one point of mana gives you two more additional AP enhancements. So you could be like, okay, I'm gonna spend one mana and I'm gonna increase the range again and increase the damage. Oh wow, on top of everything else I wanna do. Or if you wanted to, another little pro tip here, is if you wanted to cast the uh, Mind Blast and keep your action points and spend one mana to be able to add damage and range or add a daze or add whatever you're doing, right? You can do that, sure. Spend mana to do that and save your action points. And now you can move and run away and do a help action or do whatever else you're doing, right? So it's very flexible and there's Mind Blast. Now we have Telekinetic Shove, one of my personal favorites and uh, in one of the character designs that I'm gonna be talking to y'all about, uh, I'm gonna be picking up this one for sure, is you spend one action point to physically shove a creature within five spaces. Again, the, the range is five spaces as far as mentally what you can reach out with, right? Um, it's a spell check contested by the target's physical save. You are pushing your mind to move them and they are trying to hold on to something, resist it, stop it, and you may be able to not let you do it. And this also is connected to physical save because very large creatures would be very difficult to do this to, and you'll see what I mean by that. But we'll get to that in a second. On a success, you push the creature one space in any direction, including upwards. <laughs> and uh, every five that you succeed them in the contest by, every five that you beat them by in the contest is an additional one space further than that. Now the clarifications here also work similarly to how the shove action works. It's physically, is creatures sizes, is the creatures one size larger than you, they have advantage on the save, and they automatically succeed if they're two or larger. You cannot just be thrown around you know, big creatures like that. Knock prone, how this works is if you do succeed and you let's say you have you succeed and they, you're, you succeeded by five, so they have two spaces they can move. Instead of moving two spaces, after the result, you can choose to reduce the total distance by one and have the target be prone instead. So they'd move one space and be prone if you had you know succeeded by two. But if you just barely succeed, then you can choose to either push them one space in any direction or have them be prone. And you can also choose to toss them vertically in the air. That's super fun and that's, uh, it's, <laughs> I can't wait to see people freaking throw people around. Um, but this spell similarly has action point enhancements. You can add, spend one action point to have the push the target an additional space, regardless of how much you beat them by. So this also, those two things stack. If you beat them by five, you push them one space, plus that, you know, you beat them by five, that's an additional one space. And if you spent an action point, that's another one space, oh my gosh. Now, one thing to clarify and keep in mind, you have to choose these action point enhancements before you make your spell check. You can't make your spell check and then, depending on the spell check, then be like, oh, I'm gonna, you have to choose beforehand and then roll the dice, right? So you can move the target in an additional space, put even more ump into it. Uh, the target has disadvantage on that physical save against this feature, which is the same thing forceful as that we had up here with forceful. So those are the same. You're giving them disadvantage on that save that they're making to try and avoid this effect, right? Slow, you can give them the slow condition, which is basically they have uh, half movement speed. They have to move, they have to spend two spaces of movement to be able to move one space. Uh, and then rend body, is the same thing as rend mind and you're reducing the physical defense by two as opposed to mind blast reduces the mental defense by two. You see how this whole thing's mirrored and all connected? Anyway, um, so there is, and they also again have mana point enhancements in the exact same way. So the scion should feel familiar whether you're messing with someone's mind or throwing someone around. And another small little feature here is telekinesis, still very important. You're able to use your mind to easily move to objects around you. You can spend one, one action point to interact with the object up to five pounds within five spaces again that five space range you can move stuff around whether it be role play wise outside of combat you're just lifting things around moving them around sure this helps you feel like a scion same thing with telepathy the class's flavor feature every single class has a flavor feature that has nothing to do with combat whatsoever it just allows you to feel more so like your class in a flavorful type way and for this telepathy you communicate telepathically with others or creatures in five spaces if it understands at least one language of you there you go. And all of that, all of that, y'all, is level one Scion. Your class comes online, you're playing, and in DC 20 at least, level one is fun, and you can truly, truly play a Scion and have some fun with it, because all the stuff you can do there, get out of here, that's so cool. So, level two class feature, Mind Sense. You're better able to reach out to creatures around you and sense them, sense the force. 
Yeah. You can spend one action point and one mana point to open your mind and detect the presence of creatures within 10 spaces now, right? You're pumping mana into this thing for the next minute or until you lose concentration on this. Uh, you know the location of any creature with an intelligence score of negative three or higher, which is pretty much every creature apart from like feral things. This can be huge outside of combat, being able to reach out and are there, any, are there anyone, is there anyone in here? And then you can sense people. And again, it's not crazy wide range. It's 10 spaces. That's not a huge amount, but it definitely can help. And it gets further. Now the mind if you if you want to break this thing down you have the mind and the body but once we're in the mind the mind you have your thoughts the intelligent side of things thoughts and smarts and and things like that and then you have charisma which is the emotions and everything like that like so those two sides of the same coin of the mind are represented here so while you can sense a creature in this way they're within this sensing aura of yours that you've opened up your mind to you can spend an additional one action point and one mana point to attempt to read the thoughts or emotions of one creature of your choice in range. These effects do end early if you end your turn outside of range of them. So if you're within range and you cast this thing and you can connect to their mind and they move outside of your range and then it's your turn, you can still move as long as you end your turn within their range, you can keep that connection going. The two options are read thoughts and read emotions, like I just said, with intelligence and charisma type of thoughts there, right? Uh, make a spell check contested by the creature's intelligence save here for read thoughts and it's a charisma save here for emotions crazy right anyway uh, but for the intelligence side of things for thoughts you know their surface level thoughts that they're thinking at the moment and additionally you deal psychic when you deal psychic damage to the target it takes an additional plus one you have access to their mind you're in their heads then for read emotions you're now in the charisma save pocket here and while the creature is in within range of your mind sense feature you know their emotional state and have advantage on charisma checks against them and that concept is going to lead and segue us right into the class and character builds that you could make as far as multi-classing talents go with a scion. And yes, just to confirm as well, at level two, when you are a scion class, you get the mind sense feature and you get one talent to be able to go and choose and do whatever you want with. And if you're not familiar with the system, these talents can be spent on scion talents. There's gonna be a bunch of little scion talents. You can go pick a scion talent and you get that thing specifically just for you, scion. Or you can spend a general talent on a skill talent or some other spellcaster talent or other things like that that are more general. Or if you want to go multi-classing talent, you can spend this talent on a multi-classing talent, which at level two lets you be able to go steal any level one classes feature. Just one. You don't get everything at level one like you do in some other games. Um, but you get to take one. You get to go cherry pick and steal one single feature from another class and you can go grab a fighter or something or other. You can go grab a sorcerer or something or other or whatever, however you want to express and build your character out, right? So what does that look like though if we flip that? What if you played another class and you wanted to dip into Scion and pick up some of these level one or two features? What would be cool? The two things I have in my mind right now are gonna be a, a Jedi, uh, my gosh, if you wanted to be a fighter or if you wanted to do a barbarian or even a paladin, that might be crazy to do a paladin version of this. Uh, any sort of martial web fighter with a weapon, you could reflavor to a lightsaber if you're seeing where I'm going with this, right? You level one, you are that character, you're a fighter. Let's just do fighter, let's keep it simple. You're a fighter, you're using the fight and you have a connection to the force, to the magic around you, right? And there's a, there's a the lore hasn't been revealed in DC 20 yet, but there is a magic uh, force in the world similar to the force. I just accidentally said force there. And that is very similar in that way. So you could play a fire that has a connection to this. Your mind's open in some way and you've sensed something and you have some little bits of something you can, little baby role play, but then at level two, fighters and all classes at level two get a talent and you can go multi-class spend it so what i'm doing is i'm going to go spend it on that uh, telekinetic shove and i'm going to be a fighter that's wielding a weapon wielding a single single singular one weapon uh wielding it and being able to shove people as i'm fighting that would be i hope you just saw the little excitement that washed over me that would be so cool and to also show you the flexibility of the system if you wanted to play a jedi type thing but you wanted more of the mind stuff and less of the fighting stuff and wanted to be more of a Yoda type situation, you could be a Scion and then with that level two talent, you could go take a fighter's level one talent. And as soon as you take a fighter's level one talent, anytime in general, a martial class picks up a, a, 
a sorcerer class or a sorcerer class picks up a talent from a martial class, you get a little bonus bundle feature. That little feature lets you be able to kind of get some martial abilities and get you access to more weapons and more armors and other things like that. It gives you a little, little starter kit to help you in the transition between spellcaster and non-spellcaster. Gives you a little bit of mana, gives you a little bit of stamina, whatever. So I could totally see a Jedi type of situation being a scion and then going and picking up a fighting style or whatever from the fighter. And then the second little build concept idea I have here is a social master and this scary this is scary y'all for dungeon masters out there i'm sorry if somebody builds this and maybe i shouldn't say this but I, it's in my mind so i got to uh it's in my mind see what i did there um what if you made a bard you made a bard and you're just this charismatic stereotypical bar that's uh, and you you focus all your points into things of having to do with persuasion you're picking up talents based on having things having to do with, with interaction and influencing others and then you also take one little level dip this would have to be at a higher level this would have to be i think a level uh at level four i think yeah yeah, at level four, uh, you get another talent. Uh, cl all classes get talents at levels two, four, uh, seven, and ten. So at level four, if a bard went and picked up that mind sense feature, you could have mind sense and you could read other people's emotions, read other people's thoughts. That's terrifying enough for a bard to be able to do that. But if you also use the read emotions and you spend mana to give yourself advantage on charisma checks against a certain creature, you'd be a bard that could charismatically interact with somebody while you're in their head. You're in their head and you know what they're feeling and thinking and you're able to just manipulate them in the craziest ways possible that's a scary bard scion situation there i truly want to know what kind of build thoughts you have with a scion and what different kind of combo possibilities you can think of and this isn't even talking about subclasses for the scion or level four all these different things that you got we kind of reference level four just there the different types of classes that could come online and things you could do with these combos of how this whole thing interacts so uh down in the comments please let me know what you would do with a scion and comb combining it with and let me know what class you want to see one of these build videos on next i'm going to do one for all 15 classes in the core game and there are 20 total classes in dc20 and the other five will be released later but right now there's currently 11 in the alpha soon to be released four more including the bard in that list so stay tuned for all of that and if you want to jump into dc20 and see what this whole thing's about links down in the description to the website a pdf that you can go get it on the website it's a simple one-time purchase that automatically updates with every single time I update the alpha it will get automatically updated make sure you log in with your email and all that kind of stuff um, or you can pick it up on patreon at one of the higher reward tiers I have uh, that I give a constant updates and you get the earliest access updates humanly possible uh, on those higher reward tiers on patreon but I gave two different options to be a part of this DC 20 movement and it's all been crazy and I hope you enjoy the scion and what it brings to the table and I hope I blew your minds so until next time stay creative I think inside the box peace